Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I was on the House floor from the beginning of the joint session until the attack and evacuation by the Capitol Police, and I want to thank you. Um, I'm convinced that one of the lives you saved that day might very well have been my own. Um, we are all greatly in your debt. Uh, you are all heroes. Uh, Sergeant Gunnell, um, Representative Lofgren asked you about your experience, and I won't ask you to repeat that. I would like the public to see from your perspective uh, some video, if you're comfortable with my showing it. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, if the clerk could uh, roll the video, please. You're going to die tonight. Do you know how to lock them together? Here, like this. Arms through these shields. You know how to put your arm? Get, do we have a hard platoon guy here? You. Show them how to lock the shields together and hold the shields. We need an avenue of escape. So wait to lock this one in. Go ahead. Back up! No, stop! 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 stop. stop. Sergeant, uh, in that video, one of the first things you hear is uh, someone saying you're going to die tonight. Um, you described uh, in your opening statement uh, being crushed by rioters. You could feel yourself losing oxygen, thinking this was how your life was going to end, trampled to death, uh, defending the Capitol. Um, it's hard for any of us to understand what you went through, even though we were there. Uh, it's even harder, I think, for people around the country to understand what that was like. Uh, can you tell us what you were thinking when you were losing oxygen and thought that might be the end? My rationale there, and the way I was thinking, is like, we can't let these people in, no matter what, even if it costs my life. Um, that had bloody hand that you saw, that was, that's me in there. And both, hand, both my hands were bleeding bad. And at no point in time did I stop to consider stop because the attacks were so relentless that all we had to do is, I was thinking was, I need to survive this if possible, but I'm willing to sacrifice myself to prevent this, uh, the attack attackers from coming in. Um, I swore an oath and to protect the public member of Congress in the United States Constitution or not. And that's what I was doing that, that day, regardless of my personal sa safety, along with everybody else who, that was there that, that day. Um, they were calling us traitors, even though they were the one doing committing the treasonous act that day. Um, it, it is devastating and demoralizing for people, whoever party is, to call the, this attack and continue to minimize it like nothing happened. It was an attempted coup that was happening at the Capitol that day. And if it had been another country, the U.S. would have sent help. And, and, and people need to understand the severity of in the magnitude of, of the event that was happening that day. We were all fighting for our lives to give them, to give you guys a chance to go home to your family, to escape. And now the same people who we helped, the same people who we gave them the borrowed time to get to safety, now they're attacking us, they're attacking our characters, they're attacking Officer Harry character, people who never serve in, the, in their own military or in, as a law enforcement. It's a disgrace. Um, my actions that day was to save you guys, regardless of my personal safety. And I still continue to, to wanting to do that today, tomorrow, and as long as I'm permitted to do it, and if it is, if it is demanded of myself to do that in the future. 
Sergeant, uh, this obviously had a deep impact on you, uh, all of you, um, but it's also had a big impact on your family. Uh, you described uh, how when you got home you couldn't even hug your wife because you had chemicals all over you. Um, you wanted to go back. Uh, it seems like no sooner had you gotten home you wanted to go back. Yes, sir. Um, I think I read that you said you felt guilty. Um, did your wife want you to go back? No. Why, why did you go back? And, and, um, and, and what was your conversation with her about that? After I took a shower, uh, I spent about 10 minutes hugging her and my son. Um, she, I told her I got to get some sleep because I got to go back to work. And she said, no, you're not. Um, you hurt. I said, no, I'm still able to continue to carry out my duties. And by 8 o'clock, I was already on my way back, despite, despite her concerns and for my safety. My sense of duty for the country, for the Constitution, at that time was bigger than even my love for my wife and my, my son. I put that ahead. And for me, it's confounding that some people who have sworn off elected officials, including people in the military uh, that I seen at the lower stairs fighting against me, they sworn off and they forgetting about that oath. They not putting the country before the party. And that's what bothers me the most. Because I, as a uh, former soldier, I know what that inherits, that wolf. And I was willing, I'm still doing, willing to do that. And we got people right now in front of the Justice Department asking to release some of the very same people to be released, even though we are testifying about the trauma and the agony and everything that happened to us. It's pathetic and they shouldn't be elected official anymore. Officer Dunn, um, you, you described talking to your uh, fellow black officer about what you went through and experiencing uh, those racial epithets. Uh, you asked a question I think that I've been haunted by ever since, is this America? And I'm very interested to know your thoughts on the answer to that question. Um, is this America what you saw? Well, uh, thank you for your question. Um, you know, I, I said this, I've, I've done a few interviews before about what my experiences that day. And I said that um, it was a war that we fought and a war is composed of a bunch of different battles. And everybody, even sitting at this table, fought a different battle that day, but it was all for the same war. Um, and as black officers, I believe we fought a different battle also. And um, the fact that we had our, our race attacked and just because of the way we look, you know. To answer your question, frankly, I guess it is America. It shouldn't be, but I guess that's the way that things are. I don't condone it, I don't like it. But I mean, if you look at our history of American history, Things are, countries existed because they beat, they won a war or colonies and state lines and boundaries exist because of violence and wars. Like, so I guess <laughs> it sounds silly, but I guess it is American and it's so, but it's not the, it's not the side of America that I like. It's not the side of that any of us here represent. We represent the, the good side of America, the people that actually believe in decency and human decency and we appeal to just the, the good of the good in people. That's what we want to see. Whether we disagree with how they vote on a bill about infrastructure, everybody wants the right thing, people to do okay. So that's why I'm glad to see this committee composed of Republican members also. 
So I, 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 that's encouraging. It's encouraging. So that's the side of America that I say, yes, this is America. This is the side that I like and the, the side that I acknowledge. So, Officer, thank you. Um, I believe in this country, and I believe in it because of people like you uh, who understand what the flag means and what our Constitution means and risk their lives to defend it. I'd like to thank, uh, uh, as Amanda Gorman so eloquently said, uh, that we're not broken, we're just unfinished. Because if we're no longer committed to a peaceful transfer of power after our elections, uh, if our side doesn't win, then God help us. If we deem elections illegitimate merely because they didn't go our way rather than trying to do better the next time, then God help us. And if we're so driven by bigotry and hate that we attack our fellow citizens as traitors, if they're born in another country or they don't look like us, God help us. But I have faith because of folks like you. And I, Adam, I didn't expect this would be quite so emotional either, but it must be an Adam thing today. Uh, but I'm so grateful to all of you. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Gentlemen, yields back. Chair recognizes gentlemen.